Uh, hi, um, I'm uh, Professor Emeritus Sang uh, of Seoul National University, College of Medicine. And uh, this time, because my uh, tight schedule, I cannot attend uh, this wonderful uh, WFP time meeting. But uh, I would like to say thank you to uh, Ricardo and Yu Chen for uh, giving me a chance to uh, talk, even though I'm staying in Korea. Uh, today, I want to talk about the uh, simple and safe solution for frontal and lateral recess stenosis. So we call this technique uh, SDM, percutaneous lumbar extrapraminotomy, briefly PLEF with uh, ligament resection. I am uh, Professor Emeritus uh, Sang Chul Lee, uh, Seoul National University, uh, College of Medicine. As you can see, this is the anatomic structure of the intervertebral frame. And as you can see, there is a spinal nerve root here, and this is sign of the nerves, and spinal branch of the artery on the uh, anterior side of the material frame. And this is the um, veins. And here you can see the elegant flap here, and there are radicular veins here. So, this is the uh, uh, dangerous structure, spinal artery, but it is located in the anterior part of the material frame. So on the posterior part, there is no dangerous uh, structures at all. Therefore, if we approach to the posterior side of the uh, material foramen and material canner, then uh, we are safe. So this is the um, uh, contents of the material foramen again, and as you can see, spinal artery is located in, uh, in the anterior side of the uh, but here and uh, there is a ventral ramus of spinal nerve here. Here you can see the recurrent meningeal nerve here. And though the primary ramus is located on the posterior side and some veins. This is the uh, pathophysiology of sciatica. So, the mechanical factors such as uh, disc herniation, facet arthropathy, and spinal and foramen stenosis needs surgical intervention while uh, Biochemical factors such as common chemical substances, including um, TNF and so on, and needs medical intervention. So this is the target of implement process. So inflammation causes edema, vas dilation, and adhesive fibrosis, which result in uh, pain and nerve dysfunction in intervertebral foramen. So, this is the mechanism of the implement process. Impaired disc and impaired cartilage cause pain and nerve dysfunction uh, by bioactive material, uh, which is the pro inflammatory cytokine. This is the ligament of the intervertebral canner, so, entrance zone and mid zone, uh, we can find a ligament flapping, and exit zone, uh, we can find transfer ligaments, and uh, post canner zone, uh, there is lumbar cliff fascia. So as you can see, uh, this is pedicle here, this is foramen and pedicle level, and you can divide uh, this area into entrance zone, mid zone, and exit zone. This is the uh, limb flapping uh, attached to the uh, particular uh, canner. So as you can see, uh, limb flap is attached to the uh, bony structure tightly and widely. Uh, clasp of the ligaments of the exit zone is very important. So as you can see, uh, this is the um, L1 to L4 level uh, uh, ligament in the vertebral foramen, uh, which are horizontal mid transform ligament and oblique inferior transform ligament here, and. Uh, there are inferior corpus trans transverse ligament and superior corpus transverse ligament and oblique inferior transparamal ligament. This is lumbosacral ligament, lumbosacral hood, and L5 corpus transverse ligament. And here is the uh, lumbosacral uh, ligament and lumbosacral hood and L5 
hope transverse ligament at L5 level. What are the rules of front ligament in the production of low back pain? In inflammatory aspect, activation of fine non myelin pain endings and release of pro inflammatory cytokine and vas dilation and edema and adhesive fibrosis. In mechanical aspect, peri radicular fibrosis and malposition of the uh, transarticular ligament due to acquired reduction of interferior disc height and ossification of foramen ligament and anomalies of trunk, conjoint nerve root and entrainment of those uh, root ganglia at L5 root, uh, L5 area by corporal transverse ligament and L1 to L4 level in fear corporal transverse ligament. Here you can see the grade of foramen stenosis. So grade zero is normal and grade one, all time. Uh, uh, that is the um, perineal fat obliteration in transverse direction or in vertical direction. So this is grade one. And grade two is the moderate type. And perineal fat obliter obliteration uh, is found in uh, four direction. And grade three is the severe type and you can find uh, nerve root collapse. So this is the um, grade one, uh, zero, one, two, and three. There are different factors for uh, foramen stenosis, such as um, ligament thickening, disc bridging, facet hypotrophy, and collapsed disc. For uh, this kind of uh, problem, uh, there are uh, many uh, certain fashion uh, for foramen decompression. So uh, conventional technique is the um, open surgery and the other one is the endoscopic uh, technique. The spinal endos endo endoscopic operation we usually use is the uh, PLD for disc herniation. This is rigid type and SCLD for disc herniation, a flexible type. And uh, we frequently perform PSLD for stenosis. So we can perform laminectomy, flavectomy, from anatomy um, at the same time. Sometimes uh, we use a pain intervention for uh, stenosis. So transforaminal epidural adhesion lysis is one of the techniques well known in the world. So we use non steerable cast technique. So hydromechanical dissection, uh, so irrigation with hypertonic saline, uh, which is sometimes dangerous. If you uh, inject this hypotensaline into the into thicker space. So there are some controversies. Uh, uh, mechanical adhesion lysis is usually uh, incomplete, and there is a, a <clears throat> limited remission period for after these procedures. So the result: 93 percent improvement initially, which decreased to 71 uh, percent at one month. 57% uh, at three months, and 43% at six months, and 20% at one year. The other simple surgery, uh, which is the transforaminal endoscopic uh, lumbar decompression and foramenoplasty. So uh, this report uh, performed, um, uh, collected uh, 114 consecutive patients with multilevel spondylosis and neuroclodion uh, clot uh, back pain, referred pain and weakness. So this patient received the um, TLDF and 82.2% of the patients were satisfied with these procedures and complication is usually minimal. This uh, from not me, PLEF, uh, has a creative evolution. So. Uh, Intervertebral foramen has uh, several functional problems such as ischemia, autonomic dysfunction, biochemical inflammation, and nerve root compression. So we perform effective foramen compression and successful anti-inflammatory treatment, which cause uh, functional recovery of intervertebral foramen. So this is a minimally invasive technique, and we can prevent the post-op adhesion, and we can preserve the microcirculation. Uh, this is an explanation of the explanation of the procedure for epidural neurolysis with navigate for epidural kit. So injection point check and after that local anesthetic infiltration and inject introduced needle first. Uh, first injured needle only and we removed it 
and in that need and shoots together to protect system. And in that educate and advance it to the target point and inject dye to identify a passive dye from epidural space to the target nerve root. And check the fluoroscopy to observe the spreading and dilution of dye, then inject local anesthetic and steroid. And we remove, we remove epidural kit and uh, this is the end of the procedure for a cast technique. After that, we use instruments for ligament transaction. So this is um, troca and troca and cannula here, and this is the um, um, curate. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the um, um, end mill, which is a kind of uh, drill. So this is the uh, shape of the end mill and also for cure it. We also develop a disposal kit. So I usually use this um, disposal kit for the procedures. So there's cannula here, and troca here, cure it here, end mill here, and there is a toy needle here, and this is Da Vinci casters. So target point for this surgical procedure uh, is the um, uh, back part of the uh, particular canner. So this is mid joint. so there is a ligament flapping and exists and there are transarticular ligaments. So target ligament for resection at L1 to L4 level is the uh, transarticular ligament of the external joint and also ligament flapping. And L5 level transarticular ligament is the uh, target ligament for resection. Here you can see the uh, brief description of the procedures. So uh, this patient has central and foramous nauseous alpha 5 level. So uh, we uh, infiltrate local anesthetics at a lumbar triangular area. And after that, we uh, injured a uh, toy needle through the interfetial foramen. And we inject conscious medium. And uh, in this case, uh, the conscious medium is pressed into the facet joint. So latter view, we uh, change the needle trajectory. So we we draw the needle a little bit, then uh, change the trajectory, and um, it indicates that the needle is in uh, epidural space. So we inject conscious medium again, and it's pressed uh, through the epidural space, and we inject the trocar in the SAP ladder bond origin, and then we scrape the narrow frame and cure it. So uh, we uh, had a uh, workshop, uh, and as you can see, um, this is the um, surgical procedure for Kadeb workshop, and um, we can ident identify that um, this procedure is very safe. And sometimes you can perform intradiscal decompress disectomy. So here uh, is the uh, foramous nausea state due to hypertrophic ligament. So removal of the hypertrophic ligament with um, plab kit first. After that, we injured uh, plab kit into disc uh, through widened foramen without uh, neural damage. After that, we uh, performed decompressive disectomy, which enhances a plab effect. So these are case presentation, uh, male 51, um, alpha 5 from a stenosis with a uh, uh, ruptured disc and we perform primoplasty. Uh, this patient has the L3 for central and from stenosis due to ruptured disc and we perform primoplasty. And here is the um, alpha 5 from a stenosis with a uh, ruptured uh, four lateral disc. So it is located um, uh, outside of the um, um, canal. And we also perform from plasty. And this patient has the uh, F5 center and from nose due to honey disc. And we perform um, uh, from plasty and also introduce the decompressed with disectomy. And yeah, here you can see the removed disc particle here. And uh, this patient has the F5 center disc nose uh, with uh, ruptured disc. And we perform from plastic and introduce the decomposite disectomy. 
And four months later, we checked MRI again. We can find that um, uh, extra disc was uh, removed completely. And this patient has the L45 stenosis because of the uh, ligand flap thickening. So we perform a uh, fibroplasty to this patient. And this patient has the um, um, alpha 5 really fixation and upper part of the uh, uh, fixation uh, cause problems. So we perform fibroplasty. This patient has the um, T1112 level uh, problem. Yeah, we also perform from plastic here. And this is the clinical evaluation of spontaneous regression of the ruptured disc. So uh, failure case is only um, five cases uh, among uh, 146 cases of four. Uh, usually, uh, we don't need open surgery for the, uh, the patient with the um, <coughs> from stenosis. So, these are, uh, these are hypotheses are related to increased uh, spontaneous regression of the ruptured disc. Drainage of biopsy material through the interfacial foramen out of uh, spinal canal and improvement of blood supply and changes in nucleus pulses induced by immune response and pharmacological inhibition of specific, specific molecule. So this is trend in atrium disc diseases. So adhesion lysis with epicaster and ligament resection with percutaneous extraframe anatomy uh, and anti-inflammatory treatment uh, make it possible uh, to drain bioactive material outside of spinal canal. So uh, this disease uh, includes protrusion, extrusion, sequestration. So uh, previously we performed surgical fashion with disectomy, but now we are trying to do medical anti-inflammatory treatment to the patient. Uh, thank you very much for your attention uh, to my lectures, and I think um, uh, this uh, PLAF technique is very easy and very simple, but very safe to the patient with um, um, formal stenosis or lateral recess stenosis. I wish you can learn this procedure pretty soon, and you can uh, apply this technique to you, a patient in clinical practice. Thank you.